Welcome to Orchid Life, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Today, I'm gonna to share with you everything I do to grow my orchids. So no tricks, nobody's paying me, nobody's giving me anything. I just wanna share this with you. Why? Because I've shared it with my friends. You guys are my friends. I had a friend share it with me and it changed my it, it changed my deal around, dude. And now I just get a lot of pleasure from this and I'm hoping you guys too. We're gonna go over what orchids I'm growing, how I grow them, what light, how I'm watering them, what chemicals I'm using, what fertilizers I'm using, and you're gonna see results like this. You're gonna see amazing, beautiful plants. You know why? You know why I know? Because I've seen it happen all over. All my friends have asked me, and this stuff works. I've got it from professional growers. You know who you are. I love you. You showed me the way. I was struggling. I was watching plants die, 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 die. Orchid death, the opposite, right, of what we have here, orchid life. And that's what I wanna share with you guys. Number one thing you want to do if you want to grow beautiful, healthy, world-class orchids is get involved. You got to get involved with orchid communities, get involved with Facebook pages, get involved with the YouTube channels that are already out there. But be careful with all the stuff out there, there is a ton of misinformation. I guarantee you it is my mission to give you information from pro accredited growers. They're already tuning in, they're already watching this channel. They're already here to help you. I know who's going to help, I know who's going to reach out. I know who's going to leave comments right here on this video. And that's what it's about, creating a community, a healthy, thriving, growing community where we can all talk to each other, where we can all explain how we're doing it, what's working for us, why it's working, and why maybe things won't work, and what could lead you to trouble. The more you know, the better your plants are gonna be every single year. Remember, when you can actually successfully grow these things, it is so satisfying, and it gives you such a sense of, you know, esteem as, as well as just a, a nice place an environment to surround yourself in on a daily basis. And that's gonna to lead to healthy plants and it's gonna to lead to a healthy you, believe it or not. So that's what it's all about, orchid life, how this stuff actually affects all of us. And I think you know what I'm talking about. Stay with me, here we go. There's thousands of different orchids out there and they all need something. So the first thing you wanna know is what the orchid is, where it came from, and how you can create an environment it needs to thrive. What's an orchid? It's a plant, ha <laughs> No, it's an epiphyte. Epiphyte means that it's going to grow, on, sometimes they're lithophytes, meaning they grow on rock, rocks, but epiphytes grow in trees, they mount to trees, they grow hanging in air, they use the moisture and nutrients from the air, from the rain, from everything to grow. This is an encyclia, it smells absolutely great. It smelled up the entire, entire studio right now, and I love it. This is a 12-year-old plant, one of the first ones I got. You know, I didn't even know orchids could be, you know, scented. And let me tell you what, I, I just wait for this every year to come back so I can hang out with it while it's in bloom. I love it, I love the way it smells. And, you know, these right here, this, these are the leaves. These are called pseudobulbs. A lot of orchids have either pseudobulbs or maybe they're monopodial bulbs. These back bulbs hold the water. Uh, it shoots spikes every spring. These spikes will come out. These spikes are called racemes. The flowers are its inflorescence. Uh, it, hey, you know what? I'm human. Guys, if I mispronounce something, okay, please comment right there. Let me know, okay? Say, hey, this is mispronounced. Check me. I wanna be accurate, you know? The plants are hard. When you can read your plants, then you can tell when they're happy, when they're sad, what they need, what's going wrong, and then you can keep a consistent routine growing pattern. You're gonna grow huge, huge orchids for many, many, many decades, just like this one here. 
okay? Here's an example of, you know, how you can read a plant. Um, this thing was doing really, really well uh, this past week, and it, and it actually shot out a really stinky, nasty, awesome, awesome flower. Uh, this is Bulbophyllum phalaenopsis, okay? Um, I got caught up in my own life. I had a lot of productions going on outside of what I do here, and I couldn't get to it for a couple days. The spring weather hit it. It was dry. It was getting a lot of light. It had its flowers, so it looks a little shrivelly, a little messed up. You know, these leaves look like they got a little burned and even a little chewed up, so um, if my pro growers can see this out there, you know, Tell me what you think. How am I deficient here? I'm gonna hit it with some cow mag, uh, keep it in the shade and just keep it as wet as I can. It looks like some of the new growth on some of the separate stuff is, is just fine, but what concerns me is discoloration in these back bulbs and some of this purpling. Um, I was gonna do a really nice episode on it. I'm still gonna do an episode on it, but I think I just got to its prime time too late. I got a little too greedy. And you know now the flower is about at its end, so it needs to get snipped. It's taking too much energy from the plant. It's sucking this thing dry. I just want to cut it and get this thing rehydrated. These leaves will tell you everything you want to know about what's happening now in your vanda. They're like the instant tell of what's going on with your plant. If you see a yellowing, you know it's struggling for nutrients. If you see a bleaching, you know it's getting too much light. You can tell by color of what's going on. So what do I mean by that? Let's go right into lighting, okay? Your plants want light throughout the day. You know they're shade plants, but if you give them too much shade, they're not gonna bloom. They're not gonna give you big productive spikes consistently, okay? You're gonna be like, why aren't my plants blooming? Well, they're not getting enough light, okay? You need, much as you need balanced food, you need balanced light. What you see here is a shade house. It's giving me about 50% shade, 60% shade, and that's gonna allow light throughout the day, but not that intense afternoon light. It's really easy to think about. Um, think about your skin. If you can go outside and you're gonna get sunburn in the location that you're standing, your plants are gonna get sunburn, okay? If you can give them a shade where you're not gonna get sunburn, but you can still have plenty of light to see, that's, that's what they want. They want a nice, shady system, but they want light throughout the day. Some plants prefer more light, some plants prefer less. Um, you know, the more you research the species, the more you'll figure that out for yourself. But the Vandas themselves, these guys can take a ton of light. I have some growing in my patio, which is just regular patio screen. That right there is about 20%. Some of these prefer a little more shade, so I've got them growing in 50%. And that is lighting the best light you know under an oak tree if you've got big trees if you've got big palms uh, you can mount these two palms or mount these two trees you want to go north south or east facing you want to stay away from southwest exposures and west exposures because that's going to give you your most afternoon direct sun that's what's going to lead to sunburns um, and if you have a really, really dark green plant, then you can tell it's not getting enough sun. Once you're getting to lime green, a nice lime green growth, then you know you see you have the right light. And then once you start getting yellow, you're getting a little too much light. Um, unfortunately, you know I'm only human. I had bought a shade cloth coming into this new season because I had expand. They said it was 50%. It wasn't coming out of winter you know, the light changes and that's another thing you have to be cognizant of. We have different seasons and you have to watch that sun on the move all the time. The more we get into winter, the more we come out of winter, I mean, the more we get into summer, the sun's moving closer to us. It's getting higher. We're getting more sun throughout the day. You're getting more light. You're getting a more intense light. So right at the beginning of, of spring, you know, I'm starting to move over here. The sun comes out. And all of a sudden, you know, this isn't providing me with enough shade. I've got the intensity of the sun. There's no clouds in the sky. And you can see we started to get some yellowing in the leaves. And, you know, this, this one, unfortunately, this one particular, honestly, is, is, is probably on its way out. Um, we'll hang on to it for a little bit, but I think this right here is probably on its way out. And I'm gonna rip these yellow leaves off because that's just gonna lead to fungus and rot down the road. This particular part might get snipped off, but these plants are all growing healthy. They're growing good. 
and we are just gonna keep them going the way they should. And that's light, nothing to it. The more light, the merrier. Um, certain species like your Schimberchias, your Maxillarias, um, even some of your Vandas uh, can take practically full sun, whereas other species like your, your um, Papilopedulums and, and your, your uh, Phalaenopsis and those are gonna get, you know, they're gonna get burned up right away in the sun. And I've done it, I left a couple out the other day, which I'm gonna use for a repotting video for you guys. Once we get into medium and stuff like that, we'll start doing other videos on repotting so you can see what I'm talking about. So go ahead and look for those. Uh, but yeah, that brings me to medium. So let's, let's talk about medium, you know, the, the mind's a medium. A lot of my friends do come to me and they say, I just cannot grow these things. I don't know how to do it. And I just kill every single one of them. I get some glorious ones as gifts. And, and then they just die, Eric. I just can't do it. And let me tell you what, man, it's not your fault. You were given a bad deck of cards, okay? So what happens is, is you have all these growers out there and they're growing thousands and thousands of these common Phalaenopsis and other plants. And they've got to get them to retailers like Home Depot. They've got to get them to Publix. They put them out there so that on Valentine's Day, on Mother's Day, on all these days, you can have these plants that are blooming. So they, they pump them and they use what's, you know, the, what's called sphagnum moss. Okay, sphagnum moss, um, it, there's a couple different types. There's some better quality sphagnums than others. And in some Species, it's absolutely necessary to have some to keep things moist, to keep things cool, but you need to know how to use this stuff. The big box growers out there are using sphagnum because it keeps their plants moist, they don't have to use a lot of water, and when the plants get neglected in the stores, it gives them that much extra time to have that much water when they're just getting abused. Then you get at home, and in a place like South Florida where we get all these rains and we're watering our plants consistently, where you have it inside, it just stays moist the whole time, stays moist the whole time. The roots are not given the chance they need to dry out, and the roots rot, the plant rots, it goes to you know what, and, and then you're just like dissatisfied, you've got a distaste, and that's not orchid life, that's orchid death. You know, orchid life is orchid life. So this is what we're gonna do. Go ahead, and if you wanna know exactly how to repot these things, watch the episode on repotting, and we'll go into disinfection, repotting, medium use, and potting, and mounting, and all that good stuff, okay? But right now, all I want you to know is that you need to get rid of this sphagnum that this stuff is in, because that's what I'm gonna do right now here. Look, this is what it looks like. Okay, this is it. All these roots right here. These I've had drying out for a while, but if you look here, all this is is one big, big ball of sphagnum moss right here. So I'm gonna end up soaking this in, in Fizan, getting all this sphagnum out of there, being careful not to damage the roots, disinfecting the plant. And what I'm gonna do is when I pot these, I'm gonna use horticultural charcoal. Now this horticultural charcoal, for me, down here is perfect. It's not as spongy as some of the orchid barks that are out there. It dries out real, real fast, so I can make sure the plant is getting the drying period that it needs, that it's not, root, that it's not rotting out, and the carbon in this horticultural charcoal is going to just feed the roots of my plant and you will see it thrive. The plants love it. They're just like, oh, thank you. Yeah, but this, a little bit of dynamite for the potteds and a regular, you know, um, foliar application of fertilizer. And, you know, that's game changers for me. Those are game changers for, for real. But that's the most important thing you wanna watch out for is that sphagnum that you get from your big box brands. They're just gonna kill your orchids. Get it out of there, disinfect the orchid, get a nice, well-drying medium, um, you know, and be able to read the plant. If you see the pseudo bulb is shriveling up, give it maybe just a little bit of sphagnum on the top to hold a little bit of moisture and keep the root system cool, but you don't want that thing sitting in a bunch of sphagnum. And if you do, if the plant is one of those plants where it just absolutely needs all that moisture, be sure that you're disinfecting regularly. You don't want the fungus building up in there. And the sphagnum's probably gonna break down after about a year, so you're gonna wanna repot annually, okay? 
So let's go ahead and kick it over to mounts for you guys. There's a lot of different things you can mount these orchids to. You wanna be careful that you're not mounting it to a piece of wood that's gonna rot down the road. A lot of people like to use the wood baskets. I don't like them because I know they do tend to rot down the road and I just don't wanna deal with it. I use uh, natural products like either cork or fern root. Fern root tends to hold a little more water but I really like the look and feel and texture of cork. I like doing, you know, crazy multiple species mounts. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, and after a while, these start to attach themselves to the cork. It gives them what they need. They have nice, healthy root systems just growing all throughout this. Uh, this is Maxillaria, and this is a vanilla coconut orchid. But uh, again, all of this stuff has been basically growing on this cork almost its whole entire life, ever since they were seedlings. And it's just a little system, and it's just a a lot of fun to have these mounts and it's also reassuring knowing that you know I've got to deal with a little more a little less I'm sorry fungus and black rot issues when I've got the mounts horticultural charcoal isn't the only medium you can use uh, this is from days of old uh, this is dancing ladies and it's a uh, smells great they call it dancing ladies because it looks like you know a flamenco dancer um, how about this all my pro growers out there why don't you go ahead and drop a comment right now with correct spelling on exactly what species and hybrid this is. And uh, my guys at home can, can have it correct from you. Um, but again, this is another type of pot. It's got holes on it. Do the, do the holes make a big difference? No, I don't think so. As long as you have you know, the terracotta itself sweating, it's going to drain pretty much the same. This might drain a little faster, but I've used a lot of um, coconut fiber and coconut chips in this and it seems to do pretty well. Some of these pseudo bulbs seem to want a little more water, so it does it. And that's what you can do. You just, like I said, read the plant. You know, look at the plant. The plant's gonna tell you everything you wanna know. You know, the plant's gonna tell you when it's stressed out. The plant's gonna tell you when it needs more water. The plant's gonna tell you when its roots are drying up. The plants are gonna tell you when you use too much chemicals, you know? That's the thing. Less is more in this system. You don't wanna, you don't wanna overdo it with fertilizer, because what's gonna happen is you're gonna get these residues on your, your water droplets that are gonna be high in, in mineral, high in fertilizer, you're gonna get light that comes through and you're gonna burn burning the tips of your roots or you're burning a little, you'll see little, you know, I, I bought this grammatophyllum from somebody because I almost felt bad at the time, but you can tell this is what, you know, this is what chemical burn looks like people, you know, this, this it's not pretty. When you, when you come and you see a beautiful species, you know, it takes one screw up, you know what I mean? You could have been growing this thing for 10 years, you got nice leaves everywhere, and then it takes that one day of, of just carelessness, or maybe you didn't know, you know, and that's why I wanna help you. I don't want you to come home to this. I want you to know that less is more. Don't, don't fertilize in the afternoon. Fertilize in the early, early parts of the day. Get the plant dry before the heavy sun comes out. Don't over fertilize. Don't over, you know, all the, every chemical here, less is more, okay? If you've, if you've taken nothing else, take in that. Let's go into watering. Water your plants heavily. You wanna hose them down. You wanna have a nice rainy type system going. And, you know, almost think about it, you know, like a, like if you were painting, you know, when you paint, you put on two coats and you know, that's a really nice look. That first coat is, yeah, it's there, but it, no, that second coat really puts it on. And that third coat, oh, that brings it home. Uh, the efficiency of these things to absorb water increases as their saturation levels increase. And, and what that means is the wetter they are, the more they're gonna drink. So first coat of water, you make sure that whole plant is dripping. You're not just gonna halfway get it wet. You wanna make sure there's water completely dripping from every root. Once it's completely saturated, the plant has got all the water it needs. Let it sit for about eight minutes, 10 minutes, come back, water it again. Now the plant has opened up its cells. All its cells have been saturated for a while and it's sitting there ready to take in all the water you wanna give it, okay? This is how we effectively water our orchids, whether it be potted, mounted, or just open air, what have you. You wanna water them two or three times. Now, the difference is, in an open air system like the Vandas, 
You're gonna water those daily, you know, in that two-step process. With Cattleyas, like this Cattleya here, I've got this one potted. It's potted in terracotta for a medium. We'll go into some different mediums in a little bit, but for a medium, I'm using horticultural charcoal. The carbon from that is gonna help, you know, give the plant nutrients. These I actually give a little bit of dynamite to, which is a time release fertilizer, as well as my regular fertilizer program. But as you can see, I mean, they're, they are, they're delicious and they're gorgeous too. Look at that pop. Uh, which one is this for you guys out there that want to know? Oh man, she's been growing in there for a while. I don't want to pull on it. Look, we'll get into species later. Okay, guys, I don't want to mess with that. This thing's growing nice. It's start. It's starting to bloom. It's going to throw more blooms. But back to the point of watering. Your cattleyas and your potteds, they're not going to be want. They're not going to want as much water as like your mounted systems or your free root systems. Those guys are gonna dry more regularly. These pots, these, this terracotta, the charcoal, it's gonna hold moisture. And if you try to water this stuff every day, you know, in the summer when it's super hot, you could probably get away with it, no problem. But, you know, in the early spring, in the winter especially, if you start watering these things like you have your free root systems, you're gonna go right to black rot. You're gonna see these pseudo, blob, pseudo bulbs start dropping off and it's just gonna be a nightmare for you. So these, you're gonna water efficiently. Like I said, you know, give it that two, three coat system, but then you're gonna let them dry out. And you can, you can tell when they're dry. When you hold this thing, you're like, oh yeah, that's light, man, that thing's dry. You know, this thing's dry. Again, same thing. It's got flowers popping. We're in spring. Right now, everything's like almost a crispy critter. So this thing's nice and dry. It's ready to be watered again. It's, it's almost ready to be fed again. It's about time for my fertilizer stuff. So, so let's jump right into that. Let's jump into feeding. You know, we've been watering these things and water is great. Everybody needs water, but you gotta eat, right? You gotta have your food. So here's the food. Here it is. This stuff is going to, to blow your mind called fertilizer so anyway this is what I use this is Dynagro um, this is their bloom but what you want to look for beyond uh, the product is that it's a quality product you want to look for a balanced fertilizer and you can see in the numbers where the balance is you don't want to have too much of, of any one element so for the Dynagro stuff, I love it. It's a very super high quality fertilizer. I'm sure there's others out there, but this is what I use. Again, uh, they're not paying me. Nobody's paying me for this. I'm just here to help you guys take it or leave it. Uh, the Dynagro Grow is what I use um, three times a month and I use a bloom once a month. In the winter months, I'll reduce the rate, but I'll go to uh, two and two. And we're just using a little bit, less is more. You know, less is more with all this stuff. You're not using a lot at all, okay? With this stuff, I'm mixing one teaspoon per gallon. One teaspoon per gallon of this, and we're doing it once a week. So for the first three weeks, I'll use Grow. And for the last week, I'll use Bloom. And that's the feeding schedule. And I keep that consistent throughout the year. I do not stop when it's spiking, I do not stop when it's flowering, I do not miss the flowers. I soak the whole plant, the same methodologies I use when I'm watering to give it the feedings consistently. And once you have a consistent program of high quality fertilizer, you're gonna know these plants love you. They need to be fed. We have taken them out of their homeland. We've taken them out of their ecosystem where they get the nutrients they need from everything around there and we've got to give them something back. We've got to feed them, so, so here you go. The one thing I do love about orchids is that, you know, it does break through all the social classes. It does break through, you know, it doesn't matter if you're poor, it doesn't matter if you're old, it doesn't matter if you're young, it doesn't matter if you're educated or not. Anybody can fall in love with these plants. Anybody can grow these plants, anybody can grow these plants beautifully and enjoy what they have to offer to this world. And you know, anybody can mess them up too. It doesn't matter how good you are. So you got life going on, things happen. We, we turn our heads for one second and boom, you mess up. Just like I did with these fowls. I bought a couple of nice fowls that I liked. 
you know, I went to work one day, I left them over here because I was soaking things down and I just didn't want to get these. And look at that, look at that, it's awful. That's some serious, serious sunburn. These were beautiful, big, large, big, nice leaves. And now cooked them, guys. You know what? I'm not afraid to admit that I make mistakes. So this right here, this is Vanda Blitz's Heart Throb with Cyrilluck. And you can tell it's just starting to bloom. It's got some basal kikis coming out. Kikis are, you know, basically new plants. You can see them growing in a variety of different ways. These are growing from the base. You can also see them growing from the crown. Uh, this right here, this has a crown kiki coming out. Why? Because the crown is dead. Yep, the crown died, it's stressed out, whatever happened to it. Crown dies off, and then from that, you will have crown kikis. It might throw some more, it's got some basil, and what'll happen is that's how these huge, big, giant monster, you know, vandas actually start growing into vandas of this size, is through those, those basil kikis and those crown kikis just thriving all over each other. Um, and that's what you get. But again, you can read these things. Here's, like I said, I had too much light coming into this, these bottom leaves. You can tell they got some yellowing. And this is the plant trying to suck all the nutrients it can to keep up with that light, that intensity. But that intensity also leads to, you know, blooms like that. If you keep it going too much, these will be what you call a death spike. Yeah, a death spike. When the plant's about to die, it's gonna throw a spike to try to regenerate because it's its last chance to propagate. And that's what it wants to do. It just wants to live. So, and that's what we wanna do. We wanna make it live. Orchid life, go figure. Yeah, so this one I'm treating with a little bit of Epsom salt or CalMag, um, but both of those will give it a bit of um, magnesium and it'll help counteract some of the deficiency I provided it with by, by giving it just too much intense sun. So again, my fault, I make mistakes, I'm only human, I'm learning, but uh, I definitely come out here every day and look at these things and, and make sure that things are going the way they need to. So as soon as I saw the bleaching, I reached out to one of my good grower friends, Antonio Romani, and he's like, hey man, you got way too much light coming into there. So I was definitely grabbing a couple more shades and, and just helping myself out there, so. That's it on lighting. That's it on medium. Um, what else do you guys want to cover today? Um, let's talk a little bit about maintenance and plant maintenance. Again, you want to make sure that any yellowing leaves and, and, and just garbage leaves are going to get pulled from the plant and pulled, especially in like a Vanda, you want to get them off the monopode because they'll start rotting. Um, things will start building up right there at the crest and you know that'll just lead to problems so we'll get rid of our yellow leaves that we need to get rid of once the plant has actually bloomed for you and they will if you follow these guidelines you're going to notice that eventually you know the flowers don't last forever and you know one of them starts to wilt or two of them start to wilt and at that point you're going to want to cut the stem okay it's no big deal it's okay you can cut the stem you know what, I cut these down here, right by the base. This one's ready to go. You can see it's got the one flower ready to go. I'm gonna cut that. I'm gonna go put it in a stem in a, uh, in a vase for my wife inside and let that just chill in the, um, in the dining room for a little while or by the window, whatever you gotta do. But yeah, you wanna cut that stem, get it off of there, okay? Unless you're like hybridizing and you're cross pollinating and you're trying to do any kind of funky stuff like that, the flowers themselves take a lot of energy from the plant, okay? They do, they're beautiful to look at, and you can enjoy them just as much from that vase as you can out here. If you cut these, just as they're starting to drop off, the energy that the plant was using to sustain this inflorescence is gonna go back into the growth of the plant, and it's gonna give you a healthier, faster growing plant and these spikes are going to come back more often. It's going to try to regenerate more often. It's going to go, hey, you know, the last round of, uh, you know, the last round of shots didn't work, so let's try and throw another round of spikes, see if we can, we can procreate again, okay? So if you're doing seeds and stuff like that, that's a different story. I mean, I've got this hell of a, I, I don't do seeds and hybrids, but man, I am so curious, so I'm going to give it a shot. And I think 
If I've got this right, folks, again, leave your comments if I am wrong, because I am learning just like the rest of these guys. You have to leave the seed on these for a year. Is that right? Um, if anybody can say yes or no, that'd be great. But here, this is what uh, an orchid seed looks like. This one is huge. This is tricolor. Oh man, should I even try? Okay, I'm gonna give it a shot. Again, I'm gonna give it a shot. It's Vanda Tricolor Var Savis and crossed with Vanda Helva. Hel Hel Helvola. Sorry, Vanda Helvola. So anyway, but what does that mean to me? Not much, because I'm not the one who did that, okay? That was done by a butterfly or a bee, and I have no idea what pollen got crossed, but I am interested to propagate the seed just because I'm a curious fellow and I like to do stuff like that. I'm sure there's at least one more of you out there. So that's it on that. A little bit of general maintenance, what you can do with your flower spikes to enjoy them longer and also help your plant to thrive and produce more flower spikes more often. I think is going to wrap up the show today. I've got a lot more to come, but I just wanted to give everybody a general overview of how I'm growing, the different ways I'm growing, the different plants we're growing, and I wanted you guys to either learn something from it, and my really pro growers out there that um, have seen some of the mistakes, you know, that have that trained eye, let me know what I'm doing wrong. Let me know how I can do this better. Um, let me know how I can better inform our community here because that's what it's all about. You know, it's about orchid life. It's about the life of these people, the way these plants touch our community, the way they make people happy. You know, the, the de-stress they give me personally when I've got everything going on in life, everything going on in the office, and I've just got it all weighing down. I know I can walk out here and I can take five minutes to smell the flowers, just chill out, look at my plants, and it just calms me down naturally. It's a natural thing, and I think it's awesome, and I think it's something everybody can and should have available to them when when they really need it um, as, as silly as that sounds so well let's leave it there this right here is Vanda Denisoniana across with Vanda Mini Palmer we're gonna do a show on this one too um, and this is just absolutely delightful as far as a uh, scented plant so yeah this will be on our what's in bloom special as well look for that uh, there's some other episodes we have on here 4k flowers if you're just looking for some eye candy but i do appreciate everybody giving me their time here today at orchid life i hope you enjoy growing i hope you enjoy the community we're creating here and i hope you can enjoy your orchids back at home as much as i do thanks for watching have a great day be well if you guys think I missed something or if there's something else you want to know about, please feel free to leave your comments. Um, if you liked what you learned here today and you want to learn more, go ahead, subscribe, become part of the community, leave your questions, leave your comments. We're here to help. Uh, I come in peace. Take care of your plants and they will take care of you. You will get enjoyment you didn't think was possible, just like I did. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. Peace, be well. It's not, you know, my pronunciation is not my forte. I'm a better grower than I am a, uh, a speller or a gra grammatical genius. So anyway. Welcome to, Orchid <laughs> welcome to Orchid Live today, everybody. Welcome. So stay with. That's one of the ways. Well, thanks for tuning in for the first. Yeah. Welcome to Orchid. One. Two, welcome. You get it. So, give me what I want out of them every day. This is going nowhere. Orchid life. Welcome back to Orchid life. Back to Orchid life. Orchid life, everybody. And Orchid death, which is, which ain't Orchid life. You know, we're, we're talking about Orchid life. Right now, Orchid life today, every Orchid life. Orchid life, every Orchid life. Welcome to Orchid life, every Orchid. Orchid life everybody. Welcome to Orchid life everybody.